Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Klaus. I'm the lawnmower lady and I like fixing small engines. In today's video, I'm gonna show you five essential steps that you need to do to get your Honda mower out of storage and ready for the spring. Now, this applies to basically any Honda engine on a mower. It doesn't have to be a Honda mower. This happens to just be a Honda mower. This particular one is an HRR216. It's got a rear wheel drive and it has a clutch on it, has mulching blades. And the guy that owns it, he's been putting fuel stabilizer in it for years and years and never really done any maintenance on it. I don't know exactly how old this is. You can do these things, five things with simple tools and this will get your Honda mower up and running, ready for spring. Follow along. The first thing on my list is the spark plug and I'm using a 21 millimeter socket. You can also use a 13 16th and sometimes these are really hard to get off. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's clean, no rust on the inside. I prefer the 21 millimeter because it's a magnetic socket. And this has been around a while. There's a lot of oil on it, and I suspect that that is because it has a dirty air filter. That's my assumption. You want to clean this with a wire brush, you want to make sure there's no bits of wire or debris that stays in there. Just want to be nice and clean. This plug would probably work just fine, but because it never had any maintenance, I'm going to go ahead and replace this. The plug it comes from the factory with is a BPR5ES, that's an NGK plug. And you want to double check and make sure that if there are threads, I don't know if you can see that or not, on the inside, just double check and make sure that's on tight. If it comes loose, then you're going to have intermittent spark. And they usually come pre-gapped from the factory, but a simple Stanley knife blade puts it at the right gap in case you have dropped it on the ground or something, but that's nice and tight. That's perfect. Always start this by hand. Don't use a tool because it's very easy to cross thread the head. Once this is hand tight, you want to put your tool on there and you want to tighten it down no more than one quarter of a turn. And the reason for that is, is there is a crush washer from the factory and all you really want to do is just crush that washer. That'll seal that up. Now, this part is purely optional but uh, I like to put a little dielectric grease just on the rubber part of that boot. If you've ever changed the lamps in your car, and I'm not talking about a whole lot, you might have some left over changing your headlamps out, but I just put just a little dab right inside of the rubber part of that boot. I don't want it to go all the way down and hit the, the actual contact, but this will keep this spark plug from getting caught on there. And actually, I'm not gonna put it on right yet because we're gonna turn this over, turn the blade around. We'll put that on before we start it up. All right, number two on this hit parade is we're gonna change the oil. We're gonna check the level and see how bad it is. I suspect, because he's never really done any maintenance, it's pretty bad. But uh, eh, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe he did change the oil. I'm going to check the level, and on a Honda, I don't know if you can see that little sticker right there, most Hondas have one, you don't thread in the oil dipstick, you just touch the threads to the top, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's about halfway full, it's not too bad, but let's get this thing turned over and emptied out. This is merely a hot water heater pan, and if you have one of those or something like that, helps with those inevitable BP moments so you can catch all this and not have too big of a mess. That's not too bad. All right, gonna let that drip for a while. So while we've got it on its side to drain the rest of that oil out, this is a great time to inspect the blades 
And if there are any really dings on them or whatnot, and these actually still feel pretty good. I mean, they do so sh show some wear, but this guy's been just cutting grass. Doesn't look like he's been hitting too much gravel. It's also a good time to inspect the drive cable. Make sure that's not frayed right there. But other than that, the underside of this deck doesn't look too bad to me. Make sure these are tight. The torque on those is like 44 foot-pounds, but if they don't feel loose, it'll probably be okay. If you're prone to mowing a lot of wet grass, this would be a great time to clean out the underside of this deck. I don't think there's a problem here, but if you mow a lot of wet grass and don't clean that out, you're going to wind up with rusted deck and it's falling apart. I don't see any rust or moisture under there. This guy obviously doesn't mow wet grass, so I think... I think we're good to go here but you could always hit it with a power washer if there was too much so if your blades are really dull or there's a lot of divots in them i'll post a link in the description of how i sharpen a honda lawnmower blades i use a bench vise and an angle grinder i know it's some specialty tools but yeah you might have to do that it's been draining for a good five minutes so i think we're good to go here turn this back over Oops, just a little bit of oil draining out there. Not too bad. I like to pre-measure oil in a used container. And I pre-measure 16 ounces, about 500 milliliters, into another container. All these engines take, you know, 16 to 20 ounces or so. Honda's not quite as much. But if you just very carefully and slowly pour this in, it won't overflow. Oops, just like that. It's not what I wanted. Leave that there to catch any more drips. A funnel would help, but it's not necessary. Nice and slow. Almost there. And just a couple of little drips. I'm not meaning to do that. Alrighty. Not too bad. And now we're going to check our level. Now, I don't expect for you to really see this. But the level is right at the top of the fill line, which is perfect. Someone much wiser than me once said, the right amount of the wrong oil is better than the wrong amount of the right oil. Number four on today's hit parade is going to be the air cleaner. And ooh, this is mighty clogged up. If this guy had been a little better about this, you can usually just tap these things out. And if you're in really dusty conditions, I would really suggest that you do this twice a season. But for the most part, you can see it's nice and clean in here. And this air cleaner actually did its job just fine because there is very little debris and dirt in here. There is some inside here which we'll clean out. Now the replacement filter for this is Honda part number 17211Z8B901. This is the genuine one. They do have different ones out there, but uh, I tend to stick with the factory original parts. And this air filter goes in pleated paper side out. And there are two little hooks on the bottom. You want to make sure those hinge portions flick in. And then you would snap that on carefully like that. But before I button this up, we're looking right inside of here. You can see that that choke flap is closed because the engine is cold. And that is the way it should be. If that was open... His problem getting started would be the Thermo Wax Auto Choke. All right, I'm just using a little, you can use a turkey baster for this. This is fine, reach all the way down in there. And surprisingly, this fuel actually looks really good. To me, it might be that he has recently put some fresh fuel in here. I don't see any 
looks of any stabilizer that's usually a reddish color of some sorts yeah I don't see any debris or anything in there so we'll have to go pull off the carburetor bowl and see if we can't find anything that doesn't look pretty under there in order to check the fuel flow from the fuel tank through the fuel tap we're going to turn the fuel tap off if it's on it'll be like so that'll be running fuel we don't want it to overflow we want to turn it off for right now and we want to examine what's inside of here and i can tell this bowl has never come off those are the factory uh inspection points where they put on there i've got a really shallow takeout container here and this is a 10 millimeter to catch whatever fuel comes out of here and remember lefty loosey righty tighty but you're upside down there we go now what i will say the fuel that's coming out of here right now doesn't look quite as good as what came out of the tank i don't know if you can see that or not but it's very yellow compared to what i got out of the tank and we're going to take out the bowl screw completely be mindful of this little washer this little seal on here but that looks really good in there there's no corrosion no nothing on there i want to see what the inside of the bowl looks like hmm Maybe a little gentle persuasion. There we go. That was easy. And again, this bowl is perfect. There is nothing in there. It is clean as a whistle. And a simple dental mirror, I don't know if you can see that or not, allows us to actually look all the way inside of there. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but... You know, inside of there really looks not too bad to me. Now, I did notice some water separation. This is what I sucked up out of the fuel tank. So I suspect the starting issues just might be a combination of dirty old fuel in the carb bowl, new fuel that has water in it. So let's tackle that. I'm going to turn on the fuel tap. Going to just check for fuel flow, make sure it's coming out fine, and it is. And I'm trying to see if there's any water coming out of there. And I can actually see water droplets coming out of there. So let's definitely drain all the fuel out of here and start with fresh. And collect the rest of this in an old wine bottle and see how we come out here. Whatever water is in here is going to be at the very bottom of the tank. And it might be that we've got it all out. And I'll get a rag to catch whatever is left over. That's not too bad. So this fuel, I really don't see any more water in there might have just been that residual amount that was in the carburetor bowl All right fuel line back on it feels good run that clamp down to the end now if there's any doubts at all about what you saw up in that mirror couple of things you can do very easily. You want to use a small wire to probe up inside of that carburetor. I use a guitar E-string to go up in there. You can also use take off, peel off the paper, whatever, on a bread tie. And I very carefully pull, push that up into the carburetor and make sure I get inside that main jet. You can also get a can. I use just regular carbon choke cleaner and as a matter of fact, I use a hair dryer to actually bend the little tube up, but you're going to want to spray that up inside the carburetor. Just spray enough in there to make sure it goes through the main nozzle. It'll go into the emulsion tube. Just want to get any junk that might be a little stuck inside of there. Pretty easy. I'll try to wipe off that carb spray because it's pretty corrosive. 
on the paint and carefully reattach the carb bowl. Make sure you're not... Oh, and be mindful. Sometimes the carb bowl gasket will come off there. If it does, it makes it a little more difficult. But it's a fiber gasket, so you might have to jiggle around with that a little bit. Make sure it's seated there and get that bowl screw started. Easier said than done upside down. All right. And make sure that bowl nut is good and snug. Not too tight because you can strip it. That's that should be good enough. And finally get that air cleaner back on there. Give this a whirl. Fresh ethanol free fuel. Just enough to get it going. Fuel tap on. Check for any fuel leaking from the bowl. I think we're good there. All right, this is the auto choke version. We're gonna go to fast. And give this a whirl. It should be easy to start because Oh, spark plug. It's got a clutch, so it should start pretty easy. And see if it hot starts. Sounds good. So, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so very much. And I have a bonus tip for you. Even if you keep your lawnmower in a garage or an area you do want to lubricate lubricate everything i lubricate the wheels and axles usually with lithium grease on the wheel adjusters i like to use pb blaster that leaves enough of a film on there makes adjusting the wheels a whole lot easier in the future i like to use silicone spray on the plastic to plastic parts and lastly i like to use a product called TriFlow on the cables themselves. Now on this particular model, it's hard to get to all those cable points, but generally speaking, you wanna lubricate everything to keep it in tip top shape. Now, if you started this mower up and you had a little bit of surging going on, even after it warms up, I hate to tell you, you're gonna to have to go in and clean that carburetor. And if you do, you can watch this video right here. Mo happy.